Welcome to the Bluffton Biblecast, where together we embark on an apocalyptic adventure through the prophets and revelation. Though it's a daunting task, we encourage you to embrace the challenge and find captivating truths from the mysterious parts of God's Word. Thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Blaine Ashleman, and I'm joined by Lori Fichter and Corinne Kirshner with Joel Sin as our sound engineer. This week, we will be reading Ezekiel 32 through 36. I like the fact that the book of Ezekiel is laid out chronologically. Mm -hmm. And to my understanding, it is for the whole book, besides right here in chapter 32. Yes. That's good. Not like Jeremiah. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, So chapter 32 is written a year or so later than the other oracles we had just read after the fall of Jerusalem. But it was placed here in the book. So all of the oracles against other nations could be together. Together in one. Yeah. I find any very helpful. Um, Anyways, back to the chapter. Um, Chapter 32 is composed of the final two oracles against Egypt. Mm -hmm. Egypt. We have arrived. (laughs) Um, We ended last week with chapter 31 in a prophecy against Pharaoh and his multitude. Um, And prophecies are followed by laments. So in the first oracle in chapter 32, we have a lament for Pharaoh. Hmm. Um, An interesting thing um, that I found that as we read these chapters, you'll notice that both the prophecy and lament, there is cosmic and natural elements intermingled. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All throughout both of them. Yeah. Uh, Okay. That is interesting. Um, Yeah. In the day and age of Ezekiel, Mm -hmm. Egypt was second only to Babylon, Babylon. right? And they had an ability to influence, and not just influence, but trouble other nations. Mm -hmm. It made me think back to when the Israelites were being liberated by Moses. Mm. God had judged Egypt before, okay? And he would do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And and Morgan said the effect of this downfall would be widespread, bringing desolation to his own land, supplying booty or loot to other lands, and making men everywhere tremble in the presence of judgment of Jehovah. Mm. People saw that of God's judgment could come to mighty Egypt, it could also come to them. Yeah, Yeah, we read that last week too. Mm -hmm. Um, Verse 17 starts our final oracle, um, and two things stood out to me. Um, First, we'll read the word uncircumcised quite a bit. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Blaine, do you know why that is? Yeah, so the Egyptians practice circumcision. I never knew that. Yeah, and then to them, a burial with an uncircumcised or a burial with someone who is uncircumcised was a dishonor and was Mm. contemptible. Mm -hmm. Um, They were strong and mighty, and this would be an agony and disgrace to them. I never knew that. That, That's very interesting. Thanks. Um, And second, I noticed that we hear the name of five different empires throughout this chapter in these verses. Each of these empires think they had found the secret to immortality. But one by one, they follow each other to death. Wow. <laughs> Egypt was destined to share this, the disgrace and shame of the other judge nations. The only comfort Pharaoh can find is that he is in the company of every kind of fallen mm-hmm. greatness. Yeah. Yeah. So, oracles of yeah. the other nations, now we're going back to Judah. Okay, yep. Daniel Block has some great thoughts saying, okay. the oracle affirms that Yahweh is the Lord, not only mm-hmm. of individuals, but also of history. Oh, yeah. The rise and fall of nations may appear attributable to charismatic and gifted leaders, Mm -hmm. but behind all the international movements, one must acknowledge the supreme hand of Yahweh, who alone fixes the times and seasons of their lives, Mm -hmm. sets the limit to their conduct, and determines their downfall. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. This might seem like a weird question, but I I think you'll catch on. Do either of you know the hymn in our Zion's Harp call, The Watchman's Call? Mm. No, it's not super you, familiar If you to hum me. it to me. Yeah, yeah. We, we might, <laughs> we might not go us. that far. Um, but I didn't really know this song very well until a few years ago. Okay. And I think it was a Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, this song was called out in church. And all I remember thinking was, thank goodness I'm not leading this song. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't have a clue what it was. Then within the span of four to five weeks, and this is what stuck out to me, we sang the song three or four times. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And then suddenly it went from an unknown song to one that I was pretty confident and I could even lead in church. Okay. All that to be said, this song, especially the first line, has been stuck in my head ever since reading the beginning of chapter 33. I think I might have annoyed my wife one morning (laughs) because she wasn't awake and I was singing this song pretty loud. (laughs) But the the first line goes, call and cry, you watchmen. Oh, yeah, that sounds familiar. I know that. The watchmen. Yeah. Um, What do you guys picture when you hear um, of a watchman? Okay, I picture... A soldier okay. or 
Yeah, a soldier on top of a wall, surrounding mm-hmm. a city or a castle, something way up high, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. and looking out with eyes straining towards the horizon, yeah. looking for anything that's out of the ordinary. Yeah, maybe some binoculars yeah. up there with them. Yeah. Yeah. Binoculars yeah. would yeah. be good. <laughs> And I don't think this is a watchman per se, but I, I also can picture uh, a crewman on, on mm. a ship in the, mm-hmm. in the yes, crow's yeah. nest yeah. doing the same thing Lori said, straining his eyes to see if anything looks weird on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, w- with that image, I naturally think <laughs> about uh, that person crying out like land ho or ah, iceberg yeah. or anything <laughs> like that. I don't know why that just comes to my head. Yes, 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 Exactly. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you guys aren't too far off. A watchman <laughs> is not merely one who looks out, but also one who reports mm. exactly what they see and raises the alarm if it's danger. Okay, the yeah. alarm thing. Yes, yeah. yep. So we read in chapter 33, it falls on the watchman to sound the trumpet. Yep. And if they don't, the watchman is guilty of the blood that is shed by the attackers. Yep. But oh. if the watchman sounds the trumpet, the watchman is not guilty of the blood shed. This is what God calls Ezekiel to do. It is reasonable to think that Ezekiel just kept his mouth shut. He would have been considered guilty of the atrocities of Israel. Oh, yeah. what a burden. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah is. I think of what Jeremiah says, and mm-hmm. I picture Ezekiel thinking the same thing. If I say I will not mention him, God, or yeah. speak any more mm-hmm. in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, yeah. and I am weary with holding it in, yeah. Yeah. and I cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Ezekiel needs to profess God to those around him. Yeah. Well, I didn't stop with Ezekiel either. Jesus called his disciples to become like watchmen. He said, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And also, you remember this one, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. And to watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. Mm. Jesus calls his disciples to notice and to act against the flesh and proclaim his kingdom, just like God told Ezekiel. Yeah. yeah, again, this reminds me of the hymn in the first couple lines, or call and cry, ye watchmen boldly, mm. call aloud and spare them not. Jesus wants a faithful witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> chapter 35 is a short chapter, but I didn't want to skip over it completely. The Edomites were descendants of Esau. Mm-hmm. There was a long history of conflict between them and Judah. Um, and we'll read the word because, therefore, and so... Um, a few times in this chapter. Hmm. Um, and these words serve as a connection between an action and a response. Okay. God remembers the sin that they had it repented of. So they will be judged. Hmm. And to what end? Um, verse 15 tells us, then they will know that I am the I'm Lord. The Lord, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Lord. Okay, now we're at chapter 36. And okay. chapter 36 of Ezekiel marks a turning point. Mm-hmm. As Warren Wearsby explains, in his previous messages, Ezekiel looked back. And mm-hmm. reprove the people because of their sins. But yep. now, turning point, he looks ahead and encourages the people mm. by telling them what the Lord will do for Israel in the future. Yep. And these promises go beyond the ending of the Babylonian captivity and anticipate the end times. The Jewish people will be gathered to their land. The land will be cleansed, restored. The nation will have a new temple, the princes, and the presence of the glory of the Lord. The future of Israel can be summarized, where as we said, in yeah. four words. Mm-hmm. Restoration. Regeneration, resurrection, mm. and reunion. Mm. Mm. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the mountains of Israel. Although the Jewish people have been exiled and other nations usurp their land, mm-hmm. that land still belongs to God. To God, yes. Yeah. So Moses described it in Deuteronomy eleven twelve as a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God were always upon it. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's an important cultural aspect here. In ancient times, a God was connected to a particular land. Mm -hmm. And since God's people were forced to leave Judah, the nations thought Yahweh, God, couldn't protect his people, saying, Mm -hmm. these are the people of the Lord, Mm -hmm. and yet they had to go out of his land. We know why they were exiled. In Leviticus 26, God warns that he would make the land desolate and scatter his people Mm -hmm. if they broke his covenant. But now he promises to restore them. Not for their sake, right? But to vindicate the holiness of His great name. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, one Jewish commentary expounds: Thus, the prophet brings us face to face with one of the great mysteries of Jewish experience: the bond between land and people, which has never weakened despite centuries of exile from one another. This unity of fate was predicted in the Torah: Israel mm. would leave the land, 
driven from it by mighty empire builders mm-hmm. of antiquity. But its conquerors would never find the land hospitable. Yeah. Over the centuries, many a people attended to strike roots in the country, which seemed to have so much to offer. The land rejects them all, preferring to reflect mm-hmm. the desolation of the exiled Israel's heart and the desolation of its once fertile mountains and valleys. But its desolation was not to be a permanent one. Mm. Always the land lay ready to yield an open hand bounty at the moments of Israel's return. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And the land was a desolation. Mm -hmm. See the show notes on the Ottoman Empire for more information. Okay. And in modern times, amazing, with the Jewish people drained malaria-ridden swamps. They planted 250 million trees. Pioneered the use of drip irrigation. Look that up. It's Mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating. And they made the land fruitful again. Mm. This partial fulfillment points to the best promises that are yet to come, verses 26 through 28, where it says, and I will give you a new heart Mm. and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Mm. We've enjoyed digging into God's Word together, and we pray that all of us can continue to glorify God as we gain more knowledge of Him. Thanks for tuning into the Bible class this week.